Hi, this is Kurt Barone, and welcome to another edition of File Law Roundup. Okay, so now under that perfect guise of what it takes to challenge, let's go to, again, something I think is super interesting. I don't think they have a chance in heck of winning, but, and and today we got some decisions, um, yeah. right? Or yesterday. Yeah, well, um, they kind of came They kind of came in over the weekend. I got them uh, okay. Saturday and then yesterday, the second one came in, but. Okay, and they're, and they're good. They're, they're a little bit helpful, but here's what we have. I, I could sum this up the best I can. So we have a bunch of FDNY chiefs who have been demoted. And these were of, I think, 18, I might mess that number up, but these were a large number of a very small number, right? There's like 11 or seven of the 18, whatever. Yeah, there were, who, well, there, there were three who were demoted. Okay, there were three that were demoted. They were high-ranking deputy chiefs, but then uh, there were, I think, eight others or five others that then uh, resigned their position. Including the chief and the chief of the chief fire chief and the chief of operations who submitted their resignation not to retire but to go back to their tested position of deputy chief. And I guess these guys were assistant chiefs. I'm sorry. Yeah, and the ones so who were demoted, assist- I'm just reading, were eight of the most senior chiefs, right? So, right. so and the effectively, total- there's only like 18 chiefs who could run incident command, and she just took a majority out. Now mm-hmm. they first say, let me kind of give an overview because it's kind of tough to understand. They're claiming this is retaliatory and that A, it's retaliatory, and B, she has no experience, no background to make these decisions. Now, I think maybe the retaliation claim could stand, but I think they're going to find a rational basis. And I'll get into why she did this allegedly. Um, But I think saying that somebody doesn't have the experience to do something and make a proper decision is, you know, it goes back to, well, was it arbitrary or capricious, right? So what basically they said is, and they said this is abuse of discretion, but they said, listen, um, for example, there's an SCBA committee. They're going to need 50 to $100 million worth of new SCBA soon. So they formed a committee with a lot of very experienced people, and she took them all off, and she's going to make the decision herself. And she has no ability to make that decision since she's not a firefighter and has no fire background. I think that's a losing argument on that one. But they just provide that and other examples of what she's done. For example, she made a a firefighter safety. uh, She made that a civilian task, which is probably a bad idea. But um, she well, here, t- right here, let me let me point out because I read that a little differently. OK, oh, okay. I, one of the allegations is that they're alleging they're being retaliated against. Yeah. And they're being retaliated against because they point out that this is not smart. You don't take a committee with experienced firefighters who know what the firefighters need. You don't take them off the committee and then put civilians who have no expertise in this area on. So what they're saying, I, my my reading of it was is that they're saying that we were retaliated against for pushing back against her. That, exactly that what she's, they're saying. She's, right. Yeah, she's demoting us. So again, it's not so much that they could have been dead wrong. They could have been absolutely dead wrong, but they were just like a whistleblower could be absolutely dead wrong. But if they made the statement in good faith and subsequently were retaliated against, then you have a problem. That's where it's it's retaliation. So that's, uh, you know, it, it does. They don't have to be right in order to prevail here. They have to show that they made a good faith safe. They raised a safety concern. And as a result of that, they're being discriminated against. Yeah, I I, I could see that more. I think there's two components to this. But again, there's, this there's is several. very long. Right. Um, there's several. Yeah. To, to get most current, then we'll go back to more of it. To get most current, they asked for a temporary restraining order, which is very right. tough to get. Very, very tough, very tough to get. You very have to show irreparable harm, immediate yeah. danger. And the um, the federal district court came out and said, listen, you haven't met the burden of showing irreparable well, let's, harm. Let's talk about that, because I think that's one of the most important things, at least at this juncture. Because I think everybody's familiar with what's going on. Hopefully, if you're okay. not... Go back and, and you can read the complaint, read, understand. But you've got a civilian commissioner who was never a firefighter uh, making some um, pretty serious changes, uh, manpower, staffing changes, personnel changes uh, in, in the headquarters ranks. And uh, so you, ha- you have this you have this suit. Um, 
One of the things the firefighters sought was a temporary restraining order. A temporary restraining order differs from virtually any other type of um, injunctive relief that a court can issue in that you don't require the other side to come in. It's a one-sided right. type of thing. And what you've got to show is that things are so bad that we can't possibly give the other side an opportunity to come in and you can hear their side of it, that you have to listen to us and then issue this injunction to protect the status quo. So it's it's a very high burden. If you're seeking a TRO, classic TRO is in a domestic situation right. where uh, the, the victim comes into court and the, the judge issues the TRO only because there's no time to get the other person in and maybe we can't even find them and so on. And that's, that's really a TRO. They sought a TRO here. And I, I, I think that's a bridge too far here. Yeah. The court um, says it's too speculative to satisfy the requirements that the threatened injury must be certainly impending and things like, right. And, and look, I, I don't know. I mean, I, the where I thought they would get it is could have won this, right? Their strongest mm -hmm. point, I'll go back to the lawsuit's strongest point, but here for the TRO is, listen, we're not there to, you know, eight out of 18 of us, a majority of us aren't going to be on a scene to be a qualified incident commander under the FDNY's determination of who can run an incident. And we have major incidents every day. I would have thought that the district court sitting downstate, the district court would have said, you know, that safety issue is significant. So we're going to put their demotions and et cetera on hold so they can keep running. I, I, it's a very high burden, but on that part where they're arguing there's very few qualified people anymore, mm -hmm. you know, when it's the FDNY who creates those qualifications in order to allow them to run incident command and limits it to 18 possible positions, Mm -hmm. um, I thought they might have had it, but the court says too speculative. Mm -hmm. um, so I was a little shocked. But I want to get back to something that I thought as we go now, sorry, now mm -hmm. no temporary restraining order. That doesn't mean they couldn't get a preliminary injunction, although it's right. not as likely, right? Because yeah, one go, of the parts ahead, of it, like explain explain what a, a preliminary oh. injunction is, because I think folks folks may not grasp the difference between a TRO and a preliminary, preliminary. injunction. Sure. So let's start at the end. What they're asking for is a permanent injunction, right? Or a reversal of their of the decisions of the FDNY commissioner. Before you get that, since lawsuits can take years, you can get a preliminary injunction that says during the pendency of this lawsuit, the FDNY is, you know, prohibited from affecting these demotions, affecting transfers, et cetera. And be that even to get through the preliminary injunction stage could be weeks or months or years. These are all recognitions that the courts are busy and things take a while. And so you can apply for generally ex parte, although New York's gotten rid of that. You have to at least have a phone conference. Yeah, the, um, TR, the TRO is the ex parte, but the preliminary injunction, you have to have the other side come in and they've got to be able to put their case on. That's and true, that's, except I'm telling you that many courts, including New York and our federal courts, have said, we're going to get you on the phone. Um, you have to give for notice a, for, to the other side. For a preliminary it's, injunction or a TRO? TRO. TRO. Well, you well, cannot, yeah, for TRO, but a preliminary injunction is like the next step in the process. No, agree, which is, which is fully argued, right, in yeah. paper. The TRO now is just argued on the phone, right? It's okay. it's asked for in paper, right? You, mm -hmm how it works is you file the preliminary injunction, right? Well, you file your you article file, 78, right. and then you ask for during the pendency of this matter, we would like this, um, we would like everything put on hold. And mm -hmm. then you say, while we're waiting for the determination, whether you're going to put it on hold, we want an immediate, very temporary, right? Um, mm -hmm. That's the TRO. But I, I'm telling you, the courts force you to get the other counsel on phone um, yep. to have a quick discussion about it. It's not as formal as a preliminary injunction, which is mm -hmm. fully before the court and papers and argument. But here, um, the TRO test is very hard, right? Immediate mm -hmm. irreparable right. harm. The yeah. other part that they haven't discussed and probably wouldn't, but is a practical pra uh, matter. You know, I've asked for a lot of TROs in my life. I get about 20% of them, right? If, if I'm guessing, they're hard to get. But you also have to post a bond for if you lose. And mm -hmm. the bond has to um, 
and I will guess what it would be here. The bond has to say, okay, if we lose, we're going to put up the damages. Now, what are the damages? Damages here could be, well, if we don't demote them, we're going to end up paying more money in salary. So I'm, I'm thinking the bond is probably for their salary. And now you're telling the people, look, you can ask for the TRO. You may even get the TRO, but if you don't win the case, you now have to pay back all of this salary and you have to bond for it. That's pretty scary. I don't know whether their lawyer explained that or not, but that's pretty darn scary. So mm -hmm. I, I don't like asking for TROs when we can end up losing, or my clients could end up losing a lot of money, better right. on the preliminary, which there's still a bond thing, but anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but here, one of the most interesting things that I think is the best the best case they have is they allege that, they violated departmental procedures when she made these determinations because she didn't have, they argue, the authority, the rulemaking authority. I don't know. It's not by statute or regulation, I don't think. I think it's internal rules, but that they violated their own internal rules by having her make the um, decisions. Maybe when she was acting commissioner, it had to go up to somebody else and they violated those rules. Mm -hmm. I have seen cases, I can't point them out, that say, listen, where you were arguing that somebody below you didn't have the authority and it had to be approved, the courts have come out and said, it doesn't matter. They know this lawsuit. They've tacitly approved it. They didn't do anything about it. It's their own rules put in for their own benefit, not yours, and they can waive their rules. So I don't know whether they'll come down that way on this, but um, violating departmental procedures to me is much stronger of a case than your decisions were arbitrary capricious or you don't have the expertise to make certain decisions, hence arbitrary. I think that's a very tough road to hoe to say, well, you're the commissioner, right, of the um, FDNY and you don't have the experience. My answer is, says you, because the city obviously found she did have the knowledge and experience to do it. And I think trying to say she's unqualified, fine. She didn't come up through the ranks like Negro and all the others. But, um, you know, I think Daniel Negro came up yeah. as a chief and all that. Um, yeah. She's the outsider, very much so. But that's what the city wants to do. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, no, I think I, it's a very tough case. Yeah, I I, I agree on that account. Um, but I think the, the – um, pinch point was that she made these determinations without including the fire chief and the regulations state that she's got to make appointments uh, after consulting the fire chief. She's got, you know, they, they've got to. And, and is it and, the regs or the rules like statutory yeah, regulations? That wasn't, yeah, I don't think it was statutory. Okay. Uh, so, and, and, and again, I think you're, you're absolutely spot on there in terms of whether or not the court is just going to say that's they're her rules. And so, you know, the city's rules and they didn't follow them, but that's not really something right. that gives you a basis to, to argue uh, about. But again, I think if we go back to the retaliation part of it, um, that they raised safety issues. And as a result of them raising safety issues, she now has retaliated against them. Um, you know, there, there may in fact be some basis there. I think that's probably their strongest argument, but that's it's going to take a while uh, for that. That's not the type of thing where you're going to get a TRO on. No um, and no uh, again, just to, just to clarify here, we're talking about not not incident command at regular fires, one and two alarm fires, but really the, there's a, a procedure for who's going to respond to three, four, and five alarm fires, and uh, so which these, are every week, yeah, well, every they, week down at FDNY. I right. mean, this isn't like it may happen, you know, mm -hmm. like a train wreck, which apparently now is happening every week. Um, but <laughs> in Ohio, but these are anyway. big. Yeah. Yeah. And and by the way, I don't want if any FDN wires, because we've got a ton of them who listen, but if any of FDN wires are listening, we're Kurt and I are absolutely not saying that we think this was right, right? Yeah. That we are yeah. agreeing with her decisions. We're not making any comment that we agree with her decisions. I I personally, not that it matters as law, I personally agree with what they're saying. It does appear to be retaliatory. Now, of course, I don't know what the process was for them to complain. Maybe there's a rule that they want to enforce on how to complain and they violated it, right? Mm -hmm. um, maybe they should have been given hearings and disciplinary and all that. I, I'm not saying that we don't agree with the their message. But as the lawsuit goes, this is a very difficult lawsuit. It, it is. And if, if you if you take a step back from the law, I just it, it's a little bit um, 
uh, concerning. There's a couple of things about the case. Apparently, there was a chief's meeting, and someone recorded it, and then someone released it to the media. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it was released to the media in a way to make the chiefs who were in the meeting look bad. Uh, so, you know, that's that's not professional. Uh, that's political. Uh, that's the that's the kind of move a politician makes. It's not the kind of move a, 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 a respected and credible leader uh, makes. Uh, so that that's sort of uh, you know one part of this that uh, you know that is is concerning. Um, and the other is that there were um, public allegations made by the commissioner about the three chiefs uh, and that they were bullying people. Um, and, you know, funny thing about a bully is um, I've yet to meet a bully who realizes they're a bully. I, I've yet to. Right. I've sure. never met a bully who says, oh, yeah, I'm a bully. It doesn't happen. OK, we can always see things in other people, but we, we have trouble seeing it in ourselves. Hard to bully your but, support, your 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 the people you report to, however. Well, you know, but the, apparently there was some comment that she felt that these people were bullying their subordinates. So what did she do? She bullies them. I'm going to demote you and I'm not going to give you the opportunity to make your case for keeping your position. Uh, I'm not going to tell you why. I'm just going to remove you. That's bullying. You know, so you're, you're saying somebody else is bullying. So what's the solution? You know, and I get it. If you're dealing with a bully, I guess you have to kind of play your trump card. You have to, I guess, be a bully. But it was a kind of a little bit of irony there that she's accusing other people of, of being yeah. a bully. And then she pulls a bullying move on them. Uh, and and, and then, I fully sympathize with all of them. I don't side with the commissioner on this as a factual matter, but as a legal matter. Yeah. Tough, tough case. Yeah, I, I do. I, and and again, I don't want to just completely dismiss the commissioner's position either, because I know sometimes as a leader, you have people who are just they're not going to play well with you. They're going to try to undermine you. They're going to try to cut your legs out from under you. Um, and I, I've been in that position in diff at different points in my career where people have tried to cut my legs out from under you. It's it's not a very pleasant position to be in. I well um, know. You know, right. When, and I know I'm speaking to the choir. And so um, but at the same time, you know, is that actually what's happening here? Or were those people raising legitimate safety concerns about some of her decision making and that or this both. is retaliation? So that's why we have courts, folks. That's that's what the courts, um, you know, we can we can speculate, uh, but um, it's going to be up to the courts to figure out whether the commissioner was really dealing with um, insubordination in the ranks that she felt she needed to to manage, or whether in fact she was uh, a bully herself and was retaliating against these people who were, and I, I would be guilty of doing this if I was her subordinate and she I felt she was making a mistake, I'd go toe to toe. And I'd, I, I commission, when we walk out of this room, everyone in the world is going to think we agree. But until we walk out of this room, I am disagreeing with you. This is a mistake. You should not be doing it. Right. You complain okay? up. Then right? once, once we open the doors, then I'm on your team and we're doing it the way we got to do it. But but if she's going to retaliate against me for having that, then or she retaliates, let's say it's you and I, you do it and she retaliates against you. That's going to stifle me. I'm not going to be, I would say, whoa, she got rid of Brad. I'm, why would I stick my neck out? I'm just going to have to, I guess, go along with her or I'm going to get out of here. I'll go back work on a shift. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. So. so it's, it, it'll be interesting. I think the judge will have some, um, I think the judge will have some questions as to would I be, if I side with the chiefs, would I be encouraging internal discord, internal disharmony and be fostering, okay, you're free to complain all you want and there's nothing they can do about it. And I think in the background, that's what's going to be going through the mind. And I think the, the mind of the courts is the employer is always right. As long mm -hmm. as an employer makes a decision telling them they're unqualified just because their people think they are more qualified, right? But this to me would be like promoting a general or right, promoting someone to general who's never been in the armed forces. Congratulations, you're a general because you were good exactly. at something else. Exactly. Um, I mean, and and I know. get it. But nonetheless, the city, look, there are cities who appoint police chiefs who have no service in the in the armed services right so it, it 
but what are you going to do? You're going to tell them, well, because you don't know any better. Um, I, I think the courts well, are going to have a lot to wrestle let with. Me, let, me, let me quote from the Ninth Circuit, okay? It is at the ballot box then that New Yorkers must hold the city accountable for their deliberately indifferent actions, okay? Just change the change the script a little bit. And, and that, you know, that may be the end of the day, that uh, at the end of the day, it was the mayor that put her there. And, um, you know, it, that may be the... Uh, you know, the quote of the day. Yep, I agree with you.